there are some legitimate grievances that Indigenous Australia have that need to be addressed. And the most fundamental is um, the original colonisation of Australia. You know? I don't see that in the sense of blaming people, but what happened in this country is people came from somewhere else, um, took the country off the people who were here. A lot of things happened, a lot of violence, a lot of death, a lot of destruction uh, of the first Australians, Indigenous Australians. Um, that was done without uh, consent. Um, people were dispossessed, uh, incarcerated, um, disregarded. Um, children were taken away. Culture was and language was uh, all but destroyed, almost. Um, nothing has been done to address that. I mean, these things are wrong. <laughs> Um, in looking at it from modern eyes, nothing was done to address that. Um, therein, I think, lies the fundamental reason for reconciliation between modern Australia and an ancient Australia that's, that's still here. We need to address this as the primary unfinished business uh, of reconciliation. And when we achieve that, I think we wouldn't be particularly um, surprised or perturbed, for example, if we had just elected a female Aboriginal as Prime Minister. You know, those sorts of things would go unremarked. unremarked. They'd be unremarkable things. That's that's what I see as the element in reconciliation. Um, and, you know, your law professors are uh, Torres Strait Islander. You know, your, your philosophy teacher is an uh, Aboriginal woman from, um, you know, the Kimberleys. I mean, those things would be unremarkable because we'd achieved um, reconciliation. That that's, would be my vision for, for reconciliation. But I think at its heart, getting back to uh, the way, why I think the way I think about this and why I've answered in the way in which I've answered it, we have to deal with fundamental questions in reconciliation because they're the grounds of legitimate grievances that have not been addressed. And until we address those grievances, um, we can't be one nation, we can't have a shared history, we can't be as inclusive as, as we'd like to be. We can't be as fair or as lovers of human rights and fundamental freedoms if we don't deal with these fundamental questions that are at the very foundation, the very heart of um, the modern uh, Australian nation or what the modern Australian nation ought to look like is a nation that deals with those things and deals with them maturely and promptly and in a way that sticks. Well, you know, what do I regard as the unfinished business? Essentially, the colonisation of Australia and the, and the wrong that visited upon uh, the first Australians um, that needs to be addressed. There, therein is the grievance. Um, any university, and this university in particular, can do their bit to address that. You know? um, I think the ANU's got to, as the national university, because this is a national issue. Um, has got a central role to play in addressing um, this grievance. And um, it can be done in, in quite a number of ways. You know, we have to ensure that we have a strategy, a plan, a, a policy of inclusion of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander worldviews in the way we teach things. Uh, the values of Indigenous Australians have to be respected and honoured and, and be included in the way we um, do our research, the way we recruit students, the way we teach students, the way we, we um, look after the grounds, the way we recruit professional staff, the way we recruit academic staff, um, the way we react uh, uh, with 
the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and the way we lead in education and research and, um, and running a university. Uh, we need to embrace um, uh, Indigenous perspectives in the way in which we do the job we do. Um, and we need a proper plan for that. Uh, I think we're well on, on, on track. There's a lot more work to, work to be done. But I'd like to see uh, you know, Indigenous studies, for example, permeate our curriculum and our research and um, be given um, a equal place with uh, other disciplines like science and mathematics and anthropology and archaeology and law, you know. Indigenous studies uh, is something we ought to embrace and make sure that that's central to what this university uh, does and how this university wants to be seen, um, not just nationally but internationally, and make it an attractive place to come to because we do these things, because we embrace Indigenous Australia. Um, People want to come here uh, because that's what we do. It's part of business at uh, ANU, part of normal business at ANU. This is how we do it here. I mean, that's what we ought to be able to proudly say um, to anybody you know, who wants to have a look, um, whether they be a politician, whether they be a, um, an aspiring student from overseas or even a, you know, a local Aboriginal person, you know, a young kid who wants to... Wants to do a university degree. They'd come here by choice because of what we do for Indigenous uh, Australia and the way in which we embrace Indigenous studies. Mm. That That is what the ANU can do, but we've got to start somewhere. We've got to have a plan, we've got to have a strategy. Um, and the whole organisation has to embrace that and implement it. 